Oke Bakasi is easily one of the most recognizable comedians in Nigeria's entertainment space and has been so has been so for close to two decades. Now, from humble beginnings as a slapstick stand-up entertainer, Oke Bakasi, whose real names are Oke Chuku Anthony Oyegule, has at various times lent his voice and platforms to the amplification of a number of social causes in Nigeria. A former aspirant to the House of Representatives and a one-time special advisor to Imo State Governor on Youth and Empowerment, Oke Bakasi is the brain behind the one-night stand comedy series he joins us now to discuss the latest installment of that series which will have a slightly different flavor this year as he marks 30 years of gracing the stage as a merchant of jokes and humor it is so refreshing to have you here in the thank studio you. with us very much uh, thank you <laughs> good morning Steve. okay Vakas. yeah you. it's nice you. to be here yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I've been watching you guys on TV for like forever. <laughs> Is this your first time on Arise? Oh yeah, it's my first time here. Yeah. Oh wow, Fantastic. that's a good one. <laughs> welcome, welcome. welcome. Yeah. you are very yeah. welcome. All right, let's talk about 30 years. Yes. Mm. Three decades, right? Wow. Um, acting, um, humor. Stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy. Hosting our shows. Absolutely. A stinting government, you know. You know. <laughs> 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 you must have uh, how, how has it been? What's the journey like? Um, okay, um, th th it's, um, it's been a journey that uh, started with a lot of challenges. We're still going through some challenges, but overall it has been a blessing. Um, I came here in 1993 for my national service. Uh, I served at the, uh, the NIDB, the Nigerian Industrial Development Bank, now Bank of Industry. Yeah. Um, the plan was to practice engineering, which is what I studied. Mm. Okay, but my love for the arts kept, you know, calling. Um, went to the Bijiro's office, just trying to give you a nutshell, you know, to say, look, I'm interested in what you guys do on Fortune, on NTA Network at yeah. that time. Uh, the Bijiro gave me a shot, and the rest is history. Uh, fortunately, at the time, Nollywood was also evolving. Mm. One naturally, you know, got involved. And, you know, years later, we're still doing entertainment. It's, it's amazing that it's 30 years already. In that time, we've helped, you know, shape the entertainment industry, set up the Nigerian Actors Guild, which is today the largest guild in the, in the, in the movie industry, mm. you know, was part of creating the Night of a Thousand Laughs that revolutionized stand-up comedy in Nigeria. You know, so yeah, I've contributed my own <laughs> small quota yeah. in, you know, developing the entertainment industry. But this year, 30 years, it's time for celebration. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. So a whole lineup of activities. Uh, started with a movie. Uh, we just wrapped it. We are going to premiere on the 24th of uh, November. Okay. Uh, Bank Alert. Um, done a tour of you some... Di you directed that? Uh, no, I acted. I'm the okay. lead actor. Okay. Yeah. Um, did a bit of a tour of some Nigerian universities. Because my career started while I was in the university, mm. you know, as an undergrad doing skits and all that, never knew it would be this big, mm. you know. So as I mark, as I clocked 30, I said, let me go back to a few universities, look yeah. for some dreamers yeah. like myself who <laughs> were trying to make something out of this thing, but lacking in direction. So it was, it was really revealing how many people are still in, in, interested in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a good time in Uni Abuja, River State University, IMSU, IMT, I think it's something that I would like to continue. Great. Oh, then right. finally, on the 1st of October, we'll be wrapping this celebration with a one-night stand at the Co Hotel. Love you it. Know, right. The pursuit of happiness. And mm. that brings me to my question. Yeah. One-night stand. Yes. You know, this is, you're celebrating 30 years of your career. You mm. came in from Port Harcourt with 750 Naira only. Baby, I read that, baby, of course. Baby. And you know, you transition. I just, I just heard you say Zebe Ejiro gave yes. you a chance. You acted with uh, Ramsey Noah. And you know, I loved Fortunes. I love yeah. to watch Fortunes. And I, I thank you for you know giving us that your humble beginning. But you know, like I said, you started with 750 Naira. Naira. Yes. Inspiring story. And that, you know, you said that your um, people told you continue to mm -hmm. do this work mm -hmm. and, you know, and that mm -hmm. uh, you did it for the pursuit of yeah. your happiness. happiness. And exactly. That's that, that, that is why the pursuit of happiness has been my personal right. mantra. If you see my own small coat of arms that I designed, the mm -hmm. motto there is the pursuit of happiness. You know, because um, 
right from when I graduated, I realized that there are, the university environment, as we all say, prepares you for a whole lot of things. But I realized that, you know, in all these potentials that you have that could possibly make you money, the one thing that for me stood out is the one that will give me the greatest happiness, mm. that will give me joy. You know, and that was what I looked at when I decided to follow this direction as my career path. Mm. Because it's the, it was the one thing at the time that made me actually happy. And I also realized I could make a living from doing it. So imagine when happiness intersects with, uh, you know, a wealth, you know, put it you know, mildly. It, it's complete. Mm. A lot of us are in careers that, yes, they make us money, but we are not really happy about but, it. But tell us how you yeah. moved from 750 Naira to yeah. becoming an actor. Because, I mean, it's so inspiring. And, yeah. and would you say that actors now are facing the same type of challenge you faced when you, you started? Or do you think they have it easier now? I think, I think act, actors, entertainers generally have it easier now because social media has created a platform where you could expose yourself to the rest of the world without requiring any godfather or anybody to push mm. you. You're a creative, you, you do your content, you put it out there on social media, the world is seeing, they love what you're selling, they're buying. Mm. You know, in our time, we didn't have social media. We didn't even have good access to the internet, nothing. So you can imagine, if you're a young person now, you can imagine operating in our time. Mm. That means somebody had to discover you. Somebody had to put you on regular media, on television. What is the probability of that happening amongst all the millions of other people who are interested in doing the same thing? It was very, very tough. So how we survived, I guess, is a mixture of the grace of God, uh, resilience and all that. You know, but it, um, today, looking back at that, I think one of the things that helped me succeed with my 750 naira I came to Lagos <laughs> is, is, you know, my attitude. Yeah. You know, I, when I landed here, I knew that help wasn't going to come from anywhere. You know, and the result, the 700 was quickly. In fact, I ran out. I ran out during orientation. <laughs> <laughs> By the day we were passing out, nothing was left. Just small transport money to find myself into Lagos town from Yanukbaja. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think what happened was the attitude. I just told myself, you're not going to live this life like a celebrity, even if you end up becoming one. You know, uh, being an entertainer for me is a profession, it's not a lifestyle. I think some of my colleagues live it as a lifestyle, trying to impress the world every day of your life. That is too difficult, it's too tough. And that is why you find out that when artists begin to decline in their career, they become depressed. Mm. Because you've built a career, living life according to the dictates of other people, not you. Mm. So that when the resources begin to dwindle, and, the f and it doesn't give you any warning, it just happens. You'll be backstage thinking you're still it, mm. until somebody walks in and says, Abe, help me with this camera, snap me with this other artist. <laughs> you now realize, okay, you're no longer the one they want to take photographs with. <laughs> you know? Then you're sitting at home waiting, at your man waiting on your manager to bring deals, and they tell you nothing has come this in the past six months. And in the life of anybody, no income in six months is going, going on. You know, so that is what happens. It happens to celebrities so quickly that if you're not prepared, you resort to drugs and smoking and drinking heavily and isolating yourself from people. So I made that very conscious decision from an early age that this is work. All of you here, you go to work and once you close, you live your normal life. Doctors do that, teachers do that. So why am I different? Mm. The reason my job is different is that I'm in front of a camera. If you put a camera in front of a doctor 24 seven, he becomes a celebrity. You know, so the camera is a difference. Well, so why? Your job, your job is show business. Mm. Yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. If the, you're in front of a camera now, you're a show business, <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> All right then, okay. I'd like to ask you a double-edged question. First yeah, off, starting yeah. with um, the fact that you've been in the entertainment industry for 30 years. And I mean, I look at the entertainment industry in three stages. There's comedy, there's the film, and of course there's music. Yeah. I want to know what your overview is of the comedy industry in 30 years, from when you started to where it is now. And you said some Something very important about you know maintaining that kind of uh, uh, mindset. mindset where you don't get carried away with what's going on and I, I have to bring up of course um, you know the passing of uh, Mubad that happened uh, you know just uh, I think a week or two ago where we're beginning to see the very dangerous underbelly of the Nigerian entertainment industry I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that as well okay so um let me take it from the, uh, the Nigerian comedy business where it's grown in the past 30 years. 
the Nigerian comedy industry has really done well. So kudos to Night of a Thousand Laughs of Pa Williams and those of us who were part of creating that platform. You know, when we were doing it, we, we, we didn't know it was going to change the landscape. So today you have uh, a young person who is probably in school or at home who is thinking, I want to be a comedian, and he's sure he can make a career out of it and make a living out of it. That is how much it has grown. In our time, there was nothing like stand-up comedy industry. So in 30 years, it's, it's been a thing. Nollywood has grown in the past 30, um, almost 30 years as well, you know, to the point today we are... We would say it's the third fastest growing in the world. Entertainment industry generally, is, I think, is the second biggest um, uh, creator of youth labor after the outside agriculture. You know, agriculture is the is the biggest than entertainment industry. That is, if you lump together sports, music, everything, all in one basket. So the industry is doing well in Nigeria. Now you talk about what is happening, Mobad, the music industry, the the rot being exposed. First of all, let me put it this way. There is no youth-based industry that won't be full of drama like this. Mm. Young people bring a lot of energy. And if the entertainment industry can soak up that whole energy, it has to go somewhere else. Mm. Right? So it has to be called vices and all that. And mind you, too, uh, somewhere in the history of the entertainment industry, if you go back to the United States, where most of the world modeled after, they had their gang problem that consumed Biggie and Tupac in the early stages. Those two great had to die for everybody to realize that oh, man, this, this thing is dangerous. So maybe it's taken the mobile incident for the Nigerian music industry to look at itself again and say, look, we don't want to create another Tupac Biggie scenario in, mm. in Nigeria. Maybe yep. we really need to look into this thing. Because when you have youth business that is unregulated, mm -hmm. There's no entry requirement. There's no exit requirement. Yeah. It's if you can do it, just come. It's your skills. Yeah. And unconsciously, right in front of us, we have glamorized the use of substance. Right in front of us. We have used the music industry as a tool to advertise everything that is evil. You watch a musical video, for example, you're, you're sure going to see weed. You're sure going to see someone holding a red cup. You don't know what's in it. Yeah, they are constantly holding it. You're going to see one young man surrounded by so many half-clad girls. Mm. Yeah, so we're like we are unconsciously advertising polygamy. Mm. Yeah, but in real life, the feminist movement says it's not good. <laughs> but on TV, it advertises in your face every day, mm. and our young girls are seeing it. And we all think it's fine, it's cool. So we are telling the young people, this is the new cool. You know, you must be holding your small weed and doing your thing, and it's all nice, and, and you're doing lyrics that... You know, those days, you, your parents wouldn't even allow you to repeat. Mm. It's all in front of us, and we are not doing anything. And then when things like this happen, we look like we are surprised. Mm. Well, okay, I get that, okay. But very quickly, uh, talk to us about between comedy and propriety. Uh, when uh, do you get a joke? When does a joke get told too far? Yeah. Uh, and I know that you've been a victim of this before. Uh, one night stand is coming on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes you want to have like gentlemen, decent yeah. people with yeah. family yes. who don't want such a you know extreme, yeah. even though funny <laughs> <laughs> narration. Who regulates yeah. uh, excessive jokes in Nigeria? Uh, honestly, if you ask me, I, I don't. I don't think there's excessive joke as long as it does not destroy someone else, okay? Now, what am I talking about? In Nigeria, there's too much censorship and it's making the practice of stand-up comedy so difficult. We censor religion, politics, everything. So, now, when you remove politics, religion, even ethnicity from a discussion, what is left to discuss? Then you remove, you now want to also remove sexuality. So, what is left of our life to talk about? So, essentially, we comedians, we are storytellers. Mm. What we do is that we, we mirror what is happening in our environment, you know, which is why most times they say comedy is environmental. It's you, you, you tell the story that is happening in your environment. And the reason people find it funny is because it is relatable. When you are as a, as, a, as a comedian, you're on stage and you're telling a story, the reason people are cracking up is because they can relate. They can connect to the story that you're telling. And if they can relate, that means they've experienced it. So at what point now is it bad to talk about it? You know, at what point is it bad if you have experienced it, I've experienced it. The difference is that you're shy to talk about it publicly, but I'm bold enough to stand in front of the world and say it. You know, yeah. So I don't see anything as a... Two 
what I don't do, I don't subscribe to, is trying to use your privileged position in front of the audience to destroy someone in the audience. Mm. You know, pick on someone and make them lose self-esteem by the time you're done. Th that is only reserved for hecklers. You know, sometimes you go to perform, there's someone in the audience who's constituting nuisance, mm. who, who's impinging on your right to express mm. yourself. Mm. Then you can really face the person and silence the person. Right. At that point, is war. Well, have war. you ever been cancelled before? Like, you know, oh, yes. Chappelle? Mm -hmm. and what's that experience yes. like? We only yeah. have a few minutes, but I'd uh, like no, to Yeah, it was, it was I saw, I, not, not in real life, not like one-on-one. -on -one. It was on social media and a lot of people were. So it was brought to my attention that there's this particular joke you did and, mm -hmm. you know, is generating a whole lot of things on Facebook. So what made it interesting is that there were two factions, those who were for me and those who were against <laughs> me, and they were warring. So I, I saw it on Facebook and I left it like that because it was the, the debate was balanced. You didn't apologize it, for it? No, 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 no. Because, I mean, I didn't do anything wrong. What, what I did was, I, I reflect, I think my faction won. Kind of, <laughs> what yes, what your faction won. But I wanted also to just, before we land, touch on Shayton's question, which is that aspect of bullying in the mm. entertainment industry. We don't have much time. I would like for you to just focus on that with what you have experienced so far mm. and if there's some sort of rebuke that you would like to uh, share. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, bullying, I mean, is something that should never be encouraged, be it uh, at the workplace, school, or wherever. You know, uh, but I think why it's happening in some sections of the entertainment industry like music is because it's not a solo art. You know, stand-up comedy is a solo art. If you're good, you're good. It's one-man performance. You have mm. the microphone. You know, so who is bullying you? Your mm. talent is your talent. You're, in the music industry, they have promoters, they have record label owners, they have uh, backup musicians and all that. So, you know, then when you play in someone's league and they feel that you're a threat to what they do, they can... I'm not saying it's not there in the stand-up comedy business. Too. Mm. I mean, people will try to have mm. muscle orders when mm -hmm. it comes to yeah. money making and business. Okay. Mm. All right, Fun quickly, fantastic. in 30 seconds, one night stand, Thank pursuit yeah. of happiness. Yeah. It's next week. Yeah. Quickly tell us what to expect in yeah. 30 seconds. Oh, in yeah. 30 seconds. You've never seen fun like this. This is the culmination of my 30 years of experience. <laughs> one night and, and I'll be the one standing you will be the one sitting <laughs> and I'll be telling all the stories you like, if you love OK Bakasi you just have to be there on the 1st of October at Co Hotel okay yeah. well alright we'd Fantastic. like to congratulate you 30 yes, years so you, have, you have done very, very well. well congratulations very well. <laughs> congratulations OK Bakasi oh yeah of course, of course. Right. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I don't want to look for anyone of you <laughs> well done thank you indeed